Welcome to another video from Gray Lao 60. Right now, as we speak, in China, the People's Congress is voting to approve the next five-year plan. This will be the 14th five-year plan. Since 1953, China's been doing the same thing. And uh, what's in this plan? Well, the first thing that I noticed in, the, in this five-year plan is urbanization. What they're doing is they're developing mega cities, five different mega cities, Beijing, Tianjin area being one of them, uh, the greater Bay Area, uh, Guangzhou, Hong Kong, Macau, that area down there. Another one is Chongqing and Chengdu, uh, you know, but, and, and there's a couple others there. They're planning to move another 220 million people from rural areas into into the cities here in China. Okay, so what does that do? Uh, well, for one thing, it, it makes the population of China richer. And how does it do that? Uh, well, it brings up the standard of living. People in the rural areas moving into the city, they're closer to uh, uh, secondary education, uh, uh, universities, colleges and such. Uh, they've got better medical because they're closer to the, to the higher quality doctors, hospitals, uh, they have better housing. Uh, with the better education come better jobs, uh, more high-tech jobs, higher paying jobs, uh, you know, things like this. So when they move into the city, it, uh, it makes their lives better. It brings our standard of living up. And that gets me to the number two part of this. Uh, as you bring their standard of living up, uh, they have more expendable cash. Uh, China is pivoting, another part of this five-year plan, China is pivoting from uh, an export-dominated economy to a domestic consumption economy. And, and they call this the the dual circulation. Dual circulation, uh, the interior circulation, the exterior circulation. The interior circulation is uh, the domestic consumption. And as these people get more expendable cash uh, by moving into the cities, getting better education, better, better jobs, higher tech and such, uh, and they have more expendable cash, they have more money to spend on products produced in China for the Chinese people. Uh, you know, from cell phones to shoes to uh, cars, machines, machinery, uh, computers, you name it, it's all made here in China for the Chinese consumers. And you have to keep in mind that China has 20% of the world's population, 1.4 billion people. So developing products in China for domestic consumption uh, just makes a lot of sense. Another one of the initiatives that they're, they're promoting in this five-year plan is uh, promoting research and development, higher tech products, um, becoming more self-reliant for the high tech products, not relying on the rest of the world to supply uh, things like computer chips, things that, components that China needs for their higher tech products to be developed and manufactured here in China. So as they develop these products, um, they're, they're less reliant on the rest of the world. And in this day and age, as we've seen, uh, that's probably a good direction to go just for the fact that in a in a world like it is right now where there's competition between countries and, and uh, large companies corporations you really can't rely on the other people because they can change their rules and say no we're not going to sell you this right now uh, we'll, we'll, we don't want to sell you this product because that makes your company able to compete with our company. So as China develops these high-tech products, they become more competitive in the world market. They become more self-reliant on, on their own corporations, their own high-tech, which I think is a great deal. Some of these high-tech industries that they're getting into, you know, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, biotechnology, uh, the 5G, uh, quantum computing, and, and that's just a, a small uh, section of the things that uh, the higher technology that China's getting into. Uh, competing on a world stage, oh yes. Do they have enough uh, technology to be self-sufficient as of today? No, they don't. But they're moving in the right direction, aren't they? And as China keeps uh, developing their urbanization, uh, you know, develops their high-tech companies, uh, develops their domestic consumption uh, and don't forget they're still doing trade around the world and China has a little different 
understanding of how to deal with other countries than a lot of countries in the past around the world. Uh, they believe in soft power, and what, what soft power, you, you may ask? Well, rather than going in and telling people what to do, what they do is they create opportunities in other countries. Uh, they, they help build infrastructure, they help build uh, manufacturing companies, they help build industries in other countries. Uh, they bring people from those other places, like let's say Africa, to China, the students going to university, and as those students come uh, to university in China, they sort of learn the Chinese way, they learn the Chinese language, they're educated in China, they, they understand the Chinese more more willing to do business with the Chinese? Definitely, uh, you know. So they go back to their own country or their, or their own continent and uh, they have the skills to do business with a country like China. And last but not least, and there's a lot of other things in this five-year plan, but the, the ones that I'm talking about today, last but not least, is their environmental protection. Uh, they're taking it upon themselves to, to peak out on their CO2 emissions by 2030. In other words, after 2030, it won't get any higher. And they have a long-term goal to be carbon neutral by 2060. Uh, you've watched some of the videos that I've done, they're into windmills. They're into solar farms. Uh, you see the e-bikes and you see the, the electric cars driving around China. You see um, the high-speed trains that are electric uh, running around China. You see the subways that, that go under the streets of the cities of China. All of these take cars off the road. All of these are basically carbon neutral and uh, they make the quality of the air and the pollution less and less in China. I've noticed it over the last 18 years that the pollution is basically gone in places like Nanang. As China keeps going with these five-year plans in the future, uh, pollution will be less, uh, standard of living will be higher, more domestic consumption, they'll have more um, partners around the world. And it, as, as they keep doing this, and I've been here since uh, 2003, I, I've seen the growth of this great country. And each time they do one of these five-year plans, it gives them a goal to, to, to shoot for five years down the road. And you know what, they always, they always make that goal possible. One of the goals that I noticed last year was, uh, you know, a poverty alleviation. Uh, they, they got rid of absolute poverty here in China. And uh, that just goes to show that pulling 800 million people out of poverty is, is a, an amazing feat. So China can do whatever it sets its mind to. And these five-year plans are just part of that. I am amazed. I am, I, am, I am always amazed by what China can actually do. Anyway, that's another video from Gui Lao 60. If you like this video, as always, like, comment, subscribe, push that share button. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to resubscribe and whatever you do, don't forget to put a couple bucks in the children's Patreon account. It's for a good cause. Thanks for watching. Bye now.